wanted to talk about the Gospel of St. Thomas because I don't think it's a gospel that is actually addressed by the church. Actually, I know it's not addressed by the church because it's not um, in in uh, uh, in in the in the books. Like they don't they don't have it uh, in the Jesus book, um, the Bible. Some of you call it. I like to call it the Jesus book because there's so many different fucking versions of it. Um, but the uh, Council of Nicaea, I believe, did not include uh, the Gospel of St. Thomas. And uh, the gist of the Gospel of St. Thomas, if you don't know, is basically, uh, he basically says that you don't need to actually have like a church um, because you, wherever you are discussing God is is basically a church. So the fact that we're, we're even discussing um, the Gospel of St. Thomas on a live stream right now would technically be considered a church, uh, which makes me tax exempt, uh, which is which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool. Right. Uh, so uh, so so St. Thomas, um, St. Thomas basically talks about, uh, you know, one of the things he mentions in in the gospel is is that you don't need a church, you know, just discuss God, um, have discussions about what the meaning of the of the words are, and and there you go. That's a church. Um, and the Council of Nicaea uh, was like, "You're a fucking idiot, Thomas." Okay, how are we going to exploit the shit out of poor people? How are we going to take their fears and exploit it for cash? How are we going to become a tax exempt building uh, that doesn't allow homeless people uh, to sleep in these monoliths of of religiosity? Okay, you're fucking dumb. Kill him. Kill, get rid of this guy and bury those books in, in the deepest crevices of any ocean uh, that you can see, which at the time that the Council of Nicaea um, was was being formed was, I don't know, like, a, a, you know, like a, like a, like the, the deep end of a pool, maybe like they're, you know, they're, they're, they're they don't have submergible technology. But I wanted to kind of uh, do a little bit. Uh, a short reading from from that. Uh, it's it's like there's like a hundred and fourteen passages or something. I was reading a a, a, a majority of it. I got through about half of it. There's some weird shit in there. Uh, there's some like weird E. E. Cummings poetry type shit where you know he's just like if your mother is your father, maybe they're the same two. And if there's two, then there's one. If there's one, then there's two. Then what does it make of you? And it's like this weird like. Dr. Seuss on acid, like, it's just like, okay, we get it, Jesus. You were doing some party drugs and you said some shit and everybody was like, I guess we should write this down, right? Should we all write this down? What did you, what did you eat? And it's like, it doesn't matter. Just write everything I'm saying down. <laughs> you know? uh, but the, the beginning portion of it is, I feel like the, the Council of Nicaea got to like the, the first five lines of the gospel of St. Thomas and was just like, we got to not put this. He's tell he's empowering poor people. He's empowering regular people. This is crazy. This guy is crazy. Uh, is there a way we can frame him? Uh, can we do the Judas thing where we just blame him for the de death of Jesus too? Can we just say that he also murdered Jesus and just like ignore him forever? Can we say that he's a prostitute like Mary? And we shouldn't trust prostitutes. Can we do that? Is that something we can do? How could we make this guy look bad because he's not letting us make a profit off of people's belief systems and exploit fear? How can we make that happen? <laughs> so um, let me see if this works. Tell me if this works because I've never tried this piece of technology before, but I can share a screen. So here we go. Boom. There it is. That's the screen right there. Um, I hope you guys can see that, but I'm I'm going I'm only going to read the um, passages two and three. We're not really going to go into all, like the rest of it. Some of it just I, like I read through half of this stuff, and some of it gets kind of weird. Um, so um, let's read two and three. I think these two kind of talk about what I'm what I'm talking about. Uh, Jesus says, "The one who seeks should not see seeking until he finds." When he finds, he will be dismayed. And when he is dismayed, he will be astonished. And when he will be king over the all. Uh, Jesus says, if those, who lead you to, if those who lead you to say to you, look, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fishes will precede you. 
Rather, the kingdom is inside you and outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will be known and you will realize that you are all the children of the living Father. But you do not come to know yourselves, then you exist in poverty, and you are poverty. Kablamo! Damn! Dropping some knowledge. Dropping some knowledge uh, that Jesus, you know, that's what he likes to do. He likes to drop that. He likes to drop that old knowledge. Uh, and so essentially, um, what we read <laughs> from the Gospel of St. Thomas is that he's kind of, Jesus is telling you to be a critical thinker. Um, that Jesus wants you to think for yourself. He wants you to discover who you are. Right. And, and by pointing out the fact that, um, you know, uh, if somebody says that the heaven is up there, it's in the sky, right? It's, it's all the way up in the sky. Uh, well, the birds have found heaven before you did. If it's in the sea, the fish have already found heaven before, before you did. Um, so maybe it's not there because they don't, they don't, you know, they, they seem to just be hanging out and enjoying, enjoying wherever they are. So maybe we, that's what we should do is it's the kingdom of heaven is inside you and outside you. So it's, it's basically encouraging you to make this the kingdom of heaven. Do the best that you can to make this the kingdom of heaven. And that was dangerous talk, a super dangerous talk, you know, um, because that's not what the church wants you to believe. The church wants you to believe that by giving 10% of your tithings, that's how you make it to the kingdom of God. That's how you find, you know, um, the the true kingdom where Jesus is and the second coming and the whole golden gates and St. Peter is, you know, reading all of your sins to you or whatever the fuck it is. Um, and really what this, what the gospel of St. Thomas is even talking about is, uh, I mean, it's kind of an Eastern thing, right? It's a very like Eastern Buddhist -y, um, kind of a thing where, uh, where it's just like this world around us is really heaven. Uh, and that's what it should be. We should be making this world the best that it that that we we can be. We should be taking that responsibility to ourselves. And that's the other thing that that uh, the Gospel of St. Thomas kind of talks about is taking that responsibility on yourself. You know, you make this world uh, what you want this world to be. So if you want this world uh, to be this greed-driven, you know, let's chase profit all the time kind of thing, uh, then that's what this world will be. And is that heaven? It makes you ask that question. It makes you think about these things. Um, you know, is knowing your true self, knowing who you really are. Uh, that's the last part. It's the last part about that. Uh, you know, the, the, the passage there is, uh, if you do not come to know yourselves, then you exist in poverty and you are poverty. That's huge right there. You know, if you don't know who you really are, then you, then you are poverty. That's huge. So really, you are not a rich person until you figure out who you really are, until you figure out what you really love, what you really enjoy. Um, and I mean, again, that's self-exploration. That's that's finding your internal Zen, right? Which are kind of these Eastern ideologies um, that uh, that 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 isn't really preached over here. This because there is the pursuit of 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 giving yourself up to something higher, and you can give yourself up to something higher if you choose to. But really, the responsibility of um, making your life what you want it to is all up to you, not up to this sort of ethereal being in the sky kind of thing. Because again, the birds live in the sky and they would have probably seen some fucking robed dude being like, what, what is this guy doing here? Why is he here? You know, is he building a Starbucks? Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. We don't need a Starbucks up here. We do just fine flying around, pooping on statues. We're doing just fine. The fish in the ocean know who they are. They're fish in the ocean and they're having a fucking great time just being fish in the ocean. So we should just have a great time, you know, being who we are. And that's part of the problem is I don't think uh, religion, religion, religion tells you that you should give yourself up to God and God will dictate your life to you. Um, 
you know, so so there it kind of takes this this self determination away, this self agency away from you. It doesn't allow you to think critically. It just tells you that God said it this way, and this is the way that it's got to be, and and we're done with it. Um, when really, there you go. There's an example of um, you know religious text right there. Although unofficial religious text, I have to say um, that that says something um, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. You know, it, it, it encourages critical thought. It encourages you to do some self-exploration. Um, so, uh, you know, being that it is Easter, uh, being that it is in the vicinity of Easter, um, perhaps that's what it's time for. You know, let's take this time to to look into ourselves, to see how, uh, who we really are, what we really enjoy to do, and go pursue that so we don't live in poverty. We don't live in, in the poverty of um of discovering ourselves and discovering, uh, you know, what we're, what we're capable of. Um, and also fuck the counts of Nice Nicaea. I feel like that needs to be said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share, share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and uh, and if you if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.